Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Gaming with me, Tony Wo, and welcome to issue number eight of The Division Weekly. This is the official post-launch episode of The Division Weekly. The game has now been out for about a week. Tonight at midnight, for me, will mark the one week, the seven-day uh, anniversary of the launch of The Division. Now, I know a lot of people out there already chewing through the entire game and game content. I saw people on the subreddit asking, like, what do I do now? I've done everything. I've got all the high, I've got high-end content. I'm like, that's not me. And I also know it's not a lot of you guys, whether it's by choice or simply out of necessity of having a family or other things to deal with. You haven't completed everything there is to do in the game and that's a-okay and I'm gonna respect that by not really talking about any spoiler end game related content for at least another couple weeks so you won't see a spoiler cast me regarding the story or you know really a large focus on a lot of other spoiler related or possibly potentially spoiler related discussions for at least another couple weeks so if you're sitting there just listening with your earbuds plugged in at work or wherever you are. Don't worry, there will be no spoilers in this episode of The Division Weekly. Now, we've got a lot of awesome stuff to talk about this week. Um, a big focus around how well The Division is actually doing. But, of course, we need to kick it off with our fan art focus. And we've got a wonderful, wonderful piece. I am so happy I found this gentleman. This is Simon, I want to say, Fetzer from Sweden. And this is his piece called Cold Waiting. Uh, it is a Division-inspired piece of artwork, and it is simply stunning. I have to say, there are moments in the Division where the weather effects really do get this good in terms of the snowfall and things like that, uh, but there isn't really a location in the city, at least at this point in the game, that has this much snow. This very much looks like a location in one of the larger parks in NYC, perhaps even in some place like... Sorry, like Central Park, which uh, we know is actually being used as a massive grave in the division. So it'll be interesting to see if we ever go to that location. There's no doubt the game has really amazing weather effects, but I have to say that I would love for the season to start to progress and for us to see heavier snowfall. Now, admittedly, super heavy snowfall isn't something that happens very often in New York City. Uh, I mean, it does, but it's just the way the city kind of works they don't really get that much snow especially in the colder months it's too cold for there to be large quantities of snow but i would definitely like to visit a more forested area of nyc and really be able to you know see a location like this where there's a lot of snow you know hanging onto the trees i feel like this would just make an awesome atmosphere and environment for combat with uh with with you know npcs and other players and elements of the dark zone i don't know i would just love to see this happen Either way, Simon killed it with this piece of artwork. I strongly recommend you guys check out his DeviantArt. He does a lot of scenery-based artwork, and it is all as stunning as this is. So thank you very much, Simon. Go give him some love, guys. The link will be down in the description below to his DeviantArt. So moving forward, let's head into the discussion data for this week's issue. Number one, man. The Division is breaking records left and right. In fact, day one, it sold more copies than any other Ubisoft game in the 11-year history of the company. That's insane. The Division seriously had that much excitement behind it, and that many people decided to pick it up on day one. Well, that many people decided, essentially, to throw their wallets into the wind and see what would happen based on the time that they spent with the beta. I think the beta, the multiple betas that Ubisoft held for The Division were absolute genius. They seriously helped people get a taste of the game, even though the betas themselves were pretty shallow, they didn't have that much content. I talked to a lot of people who played the beta, and it really helped them, you know, sort of seal the deal as to whether or not they were going to pick the game up day one, considering we didn't really have any reviews day one because the uh, game didn't actually get sent out until like the day before for most people, or the day of actually for a lot of people. So uh, a lot of reviews for The Division still not even up yet. But it's still selling really well. That is awesome to see. And actually, just today, we got word that it beat another Ubisoft record. It actually beat a record that was held by Gran Turismo 4 since 2005. That's absolutely insane. I didn't even know that GT4 held a record for that long, but it did. And the division beat it. <laughs> and that's actually really freaking cool. Ubisoft's actually doing uh, a really good job they're seeing a lot of success in terms of sales right now which is awesome what i don't want is to see them get cocky and the ceo of ubisoft already came out and was like the division identifies our ability to create brand new exciting brands okay yes 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 pat yourself on the back just just a little bit but remember you know the reason you're here is because of the consumer and the fans who picked up the game 
Don't don't get all cocky on us. That happened before with a certain franchise called Assassin's Creed. There's no doubt that I want to see more of the division, and I very much think there's a lot of opportunity to expand on this game and to push forward. I'm talking take us into spring and summer. Like the idea that, you know, the game could be one and done, like the story could be one and done in one game, is just it's not gonna happen, even in DLC. So I would very much like to see the division go forward. I have nothing wrong with the idea of hoping for more division but again no one wants to see it annualized i want to see it if it's going to be a franchise that has multiple entries let's make it a really good one let's make it very memorable you know let's make it halo one two and three gears of war one two and three you know let's let's take our time take your time ubisoft there's no rush hook us up with some free dlc maybe we'll buy your expansions if we like what you've done and let's go from there but let's take things slow let's take things very very slow <laughs> Now, another positive element wrapped up in the whole, you know, sort of impressions and sales of the game is the fact that the Steam rating for The Division has rapidly increased. Launch day, there was a ton of people who absolutely bombarded the Steam review system, which honestly, I never follow Steam reviews anyways, but I know some people actually look at that. Um, it is a, you know, it's a congregate review system, much like Metacritic, and it, it frankly doesn't work because large numbers of people can hoard and simply, you know, mob a review for the sake of mobbing it. And admittedly, the division had some issues with servers on day one. So people who had only played the game for an hour or who simply couldn't log in, decided that they were just going to give it a negative review. And at that point, it was like 50-50 split between positive and negative. The game since then has been pushed up to 70% mostly positive, which is awesome to see. A lot of people writing what I would say are considered you know, much more true reviews of what the game is about. You know, we won't get into the details of how things are handled, but at least identifying the division for what it actually is. An RPG-focused third-person cover-based shooter. So I'm just happy to see that happening because I do believe the game deserves attention or at least proper attention. If you don't like it because it's a third-person shooter, because it has RPG elements, because it is, you know, very much about killing things over and over, then I fully understand that. That's what the game is, but there are people who enjoy that type of experience, hence the ridiculously great sales. So let's move forward. I wanted to talk a little bit more about my post-launch impression. Some of you guys may have seen, may have saw my first impressions video that I did on the game, that was about 10 hours in. Since then, I've played a lot more. Um, I've reached level cap, I've finished the story, and, you know, like, the game actually just improved. Like, early on, don't get me wrong, really enjoying the firefights genuinely was, but the further you get into the experience, the harder the enemies become, the, the more variation you see within the enemies within any given faction, you know, the cleaners and the last man battalion, the more interesting and intense the firefights become, and overall, the more enjoyable the game became. Plus, I really enjoyed progressing throughout NYC, through the different districts, uh, just, again, a lot of interior locations. I didn't really expect to see as many interior locations in the game as I actually did. And that's probably one of my favorite parts of the game is actually going in, into all these close quarter scenarios and office buildings and, and actually dealing with enemies. You know, you're fighting the last man battalion in small hallways and stuff. Not something I expected the game to do. Really genuinely impressed by that. And overall, the level of detail in the game has continued to blow me away. I've talked numerous times about the visual quality and the effects that the game features. A lot of the you know, weather effects, the glare, the level of detail and simple things like shooting a glass table or a glass bottle. Uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff done in the environment. And for a game of this size that has no loading screens, I mean, that truly is an astonishing task that Ubisoft and team have actually completed. Very, very impressed by all of that. On top of that, I really dig, you know, just, again, the detail in the animations, the character. Like, there's a lot of things you probably don't notice until you really start staring at the game and trying to notice them. Um, number one, I just love how all of the gear that your agent wears on his go bag is is constantly alive. You know, there's there's wires hanging down. I have a, a hatchet on my character's go bag right now that swings around. The animation sets as a whole, if you really pay attention to them, your character's constantly changing grip on his firearm as he's climbing over cover. His arm is, you know, reaching around to do things like everything is animated. Not everything, but just about everything. And that, for me, provides a lot of it's a lot of eye candy. I mean, I'm a sucker for animations. They're almost as important to me as, you know, the shiny shinies and 
and the atmosphere and all of that stuff. I, I really love amazing animations, which is why Escape from Tarkov has me so, you know, up in a up in a fit about that game. But I think they did an outstanding job with the division, especially considering in a third person game, it's very important that you make a push for good animations, uh, regardless of what the character is doing. Vaulting, mantling, you know, walking through doorways, firing their weapon, throwing grenades, throwing equipment. Like, it's just a really good job. Um, and again, a lot of those details have started to shine through now that I'm pushing into the two day mark of the game. I'm really starting to take notice of them. And I'm walking away even more impressed than I already was. Now, we talked a little bit, you know, about like, how people are getting through the game more quickly than others. Again, I have no problem with that. If you, you know, there's YouTubers who felt the need to rush through the entire experience. Um, you know, I'm not going to say that people, how they should play. But for me personally, you know, there's no way you can savor an experience. You know, there's no way you can take it all in when you're simply, you know, rushing through every single mission in the side mission. Like, there's so much in the game world. The graffiti in the environments, you know, just actually bothering to read the echoes and listen to the phone calls. You learn so much about what's going on, what has gone on in New York City. And I think I've walked away at the end of the day with the story completed at level 30 with an amazing, you know, sense of story and atmosphere and understanding as to what happened and what is continuing to happen in the game because... I took so much time because I absorbed all of that. Now, it's not like you can't go back. I imagine a lot of people who rush to the game for the sake of getting to cap, you know, or trying to race to level cap, are going to go back and read all those little bits and pieces, and they will definitely absorb it. But I like knowing that I did it along the way. I like knowing that I took things at my pace. I enjoyed the crafting system more because I was able to craft equipment that I could actually then use. Um, it, you know, it gave me a lot of time to consider different abilities and skills. Like, I just, I really... Love that I feel so set up to move into Endgame with a good focus and a good mindset as to where I want to go with my character, what kind of builds I want to create. Um, and all I really ask you guys to do at the end of the day is just remember why you play games. Like, sit down, you know, why were you enjoying The Division when you started playing? And, you know, at what point are you either enjoying it a different way or you realize you're not actually enjoying it for any good reason? Uh, one of you guys on Twitter, actually, we I had a talk, I, you know, talked about people really grinding hardcore, you know, at the game and, and, and getting ready to already farm the Dark Zone and how that just wasn't me. I like to just play things as they lie and have a good time and and not take it too mathematically. <laughs> and one of you pointed out, you know, like, for you, Destiny lost its luster when your fire team started cheesing, you know, like Kratos and things like that. And I think that's a really good way to look at it. You know, when you start playing the game for the sake of the loot and you no longer see enjoyment in the moment value, as you guys know, I love to say in the combat and in the, you know, the firefights with your friends, that's when you need to recognize and, and step away. You know, you don't have to play the division for an entire year. It's okay to take a break and come back when they add in DLC, when they expand the content. There's no reason to kill yourself by aimlessly grinding away at the same content just for the sake of grinding away, uh, you know, to try and pass time until the next piece of DLC. I've done this with Destiny, you know, walk away. It's okay, the game will be here. That's the great thing about a game like this is you can walk away and then come back to it. And in most cases, you know, as we do know, there's gonna be free con for the division, content for the division. You won't have to buy anything. You'll just plug the game back in. Hey, we added some new challenge mode for PvP, PvE. Like, it's okay to take a break. Just just ask yourself why you're playing. And I think it's important to continue to ask your that's ask yourself that question, especially with a game like this. A game like this, a game like Destiny, you know, games that try to have persistent experiences that you can play again and again and again. All right, so I want to move forward and talk about the Tom Clancy branding. We briefly mentioned this in an episode of The Division Weekly a while back. I think it was like four episodes ago. A Lone Wolf actually mentioned the idea to me down in the comment section of one of the videos, and he was like, you know, do you guys think that when they first started developing this game, it was going to be more tactical, and then when they saw the success of Destiny, they sort of switched things over? Now, I have to say, I feel like... I mean, from what we saw early on with this game even, it looked like it was being built to be, you know, an RPG-focused experience. Um, you see a lot of the leaks and stuff that people talked about early on, you know, two years ago even, people were starting to cover this game just based on leaks. And it always had an element of, you know, a being an RPG shooter. I think a lot of people perceived it as being, like, a tactical third-person shooter, and I still think that the game, you know, in a way could have that experience, but it's definitely nowhere near the longs along the lines of something like Ghost Recon, um, you know, or uh, or Rainbow Six. You know, obviously, it doesn't even touch those experiences. So, I don't, 
I don't want to. I, I don't feel like they were influenced by Destiny at all. I think like a lot of those, you know, RPG MMO elements were always planned to be here in the game. But I, you know, it, I think it's very possible that they had a certain direction for the combat and how it was going to pan out when they realized that they had all these RPG components. Because again, this was something we saw at the reveal of the game using, you know, the drone and the healing abilities. They may have realized that, hey, you know, if we don't like have a game that's built around an extended time to kill, these abilities aren't as meaningful. And I think that's a that would be a very difficult problem to solve. You know, you're in a firefight um, and you've got enemies that one or two shot you while you one or two shot them. There's no real need for like a healing station. <laughs> um, you know, there's no needing for hots, you know, healing over time or, or you know, dots damage over time even because things are going to die more quickly. So it would remove a very essential component in the formula that ended up making the division what it is. So I, I'm kind of happy. I like the RPG aspect of the division. I genuinely do. Could it have been cool? Would it have been cool to potentially see a game like The Division that is more focused on a, you know, hardcore short time to kill experience like something like Rainbow Six? Yeah, I mean, no one's ever done that. I, I think that'd be fantastic. And in a lot of ways, you know, I was very hopeful that Rainbow Six Patriots would have actually been created and they would have done something like that with that game. But we got Siege instead, which is OK. I still really enjoy Siege, but um, that's definitely an area that I would like to see someone explore. And I think The Division has done so many things right in terms of its layout, you know, having the strong focus on PvE and then having an alternative focus on a PvP slash PvE zone. So it's not just all PvP PvE. I think that really could have taken away from The Division's, um, you know, sort of from what makes The Division, you know, enjoyable for me. I don't need any more Daisy type experiences. I'm okay with the Daisy type experience within my PVE experience, but I don't want the division to be all of that. Anyways, that's my thoughts on it. The really big thing I think we have to realize is that when I look at the Tom Clancy branding, the reason I'm okay with Tom Clancy's branding being on the division is that, you know, traditionally, yes, we start to connect Tom Clancy names to experiences like Ghost Recon. Like everything we've seen under the Tom Clancy banner previously has been a very tactical experience for lack of a better word um you know the ghost recon franchise rainbow six splinter cell they're more hardcore like you die quickly experiences there's no doubt about that but i think when you look at the bigger idea of tom clancy it's about telling stories it's about telling stories that are you know usually directed directly connected to the government military outfits and things of that nature and i think the division tells probably the most interesting story in that sort of atmosphere and for me, it falls in line with, you know, more unique stories that have been told by, you know, Clancy himself, like The Hunt for Red October, which you guys know I rave about consistently. Um, some of all fears and things like that. You know, it falls in line with that. Just because the core gameplay doesn't fit into what we know from Tom Clancy games, I think other elements of The Division do. And that's why I'm, I'm okay I'm okay with the branding. Um, I don't think that they needed the branding for the game to sell. You know, it's not like Ubisoft hasn't sold games under different names and still had them, you know, do relatively well. But I imagine there was someone in marketing who was like, well, it's a shooter and, you know, we're telling a military type story. There's going to be, you know, Directive 51 and uh, we, uh, put Tom Clancy on it. It's just going to help it sell better. And I, I don't know. We'll never really know because they launched it with the Tom Clancy branding. And we can't go back in time to see what would happen if they didn't. All right, guys, so we're going to wrap it up today with something I told you guys about several times throughout the course of the Division Weekly's history on how I wanted to do viewer, you know, focused content, you know, get you guys involved, submit stuff to the Division Weekly to be featured once the game went live. The first iteration of that or the first, you know, thing we're going to do are going to be viewer agent build focuses. So much like we do the fan art focus. I want to do some viewer agent build focuses. Now, I've created a template, which you guys are going to see up on the screen. I'm also just going to post the template, um, the image example that I have down in the comment section below. So if you're at work or something like that, you're not watching it, you can come back later and check it out. I'll also post it in the comments to make it easy for people to see the link. Um, just a basic template. You don't have to include an image. I just want the information that's on screen. Now, there's a couple ways you can submit your builds to me. You can hit me up on Twitter at TonyMo034. You can send me an image similar to this one. Make your own little infographic as cool as you want it to be, and I will feature it. You can send me just the information and a picture of your character, a screenshot, and I will build the infographic yourself. Or you can send me just the information. 
Now, this is just a tease for my build, the Paladin build here. So you notice I've split it up into categories. So we have playstyle, attribute focus, abilities, ability mods, talents, and loadout focus. So the playstyle for this build, the Paladin build, is squad support in both the PvE and Dark Zone. Attribute focus, firearms and skill power, abilities, support station and smart cover, ability mods, revive and heal, skill cooldown, talents, combat medic, evasive action, and tech support. The loadout focus is assault rifles and shotguns. Like I said, this is a tease for my agent build. I'm going to be doing an entire video on this and really fleshing it out and also giving you guys substantial reasons and situations in which this build would be most effective. So what I want you guys to do when you actually go to submit your viewer agent build focus is to number one, fill out the template in this format, but then also include an actual written document, a paragraph as to what situations you would use this character in. You know, the types of play style that you might see your other teammates using. Like, build a scenario, build a story for how, when, and where you use the agent build that you are sharing with me. I'm going to select the one that I feel is the most unique and, you know, just seems the most well put together to be featured on the next issue of The Division Weekly. This is something I really want to see you guys get involved in. I know it's still early days, so if we don't have any submissions in this issue, that's okay. Don't be afraid, though, to submit a build that's level 14 even. It's more about the premise, right? You have your abilities, you have your, uh, you know, your talents, you have your loadout focus, your attribute focus, and the playstyle. I don't care if you don't have max level gear. I don't care if your numbers for firearms and skill power aren't where you want them yet. You can have the build in your head, and you can have dabbled with an initial build of it a little bit, and you can still share it. You know, this is... It's always a work in progress making builds like this. And of course, as you acquire gear and you fine tune the gear to have, you know, attributes that you that you want for that specific build, it's going to grow. I understand that not everyone's level 30. You're not all running around with high end gear. I know I'm not even there yet. I've got one piece of high end gear and that's only because they gave it to me at the end of the last mission. So don't be afraid to share an earlier character build. And I think in a lot of ways, there are people who are going to be picking up the game in the coming months. There are people who are still taking their time to play it who would love to see an early character build so they can use it as a template to build a character build of their own. Don't be afraid, guys. Like I said, hit me up at, at TonyMo034. You can send me an image you've already built. Um, or you can go ahead and just post down in the comment section below. Use that outline and then give me a nice, you know, solid paragraph explanation as to what type of situation you would use the character in. Feel free, though. Like, do it all in the comment section below. I'm not going to have you guys, you know, send me word documents if you want to share an image with me with all of that on twitter you can but just feel free to post it right down in the comment section below that's what we've got that crazy character limit for now and i am not afraid to let you guys use it that's gonna do it for this week though guys the very first post-launch episode of the division weekly has come to an end i want to thank all of you guys once again for watching my division content has been doing really really well um as well as I hoped it would, and if not better. So that's really exciting. I plan on covering plenty more of The Division, making lots of interesting and unique videos, really trying to break away from the norm. There's no doubt that you guys are still going to see, you know, smaller guides like the recalibration one. I'm looking to do a crafting guide very soon. Like, that stuff helps draw people to the channel, but I've said, as I've said so many times before, I like to make content that goes so much more beyond that, and that's a lot of what you're going to be seeing in the coming weeks regarding The Division. Don't you worry though if you're not 100% about the division and you love that I cover other stuff on the channel the variety will still be here we're gonna be taking a look at the new hitman in the coming days not to mention moving forward in the following months there's a lot of awesome stuff coming out any other questions for me guys leave them down in the comment section below any of your own thoughts or opinions on the Tom Clancy branding um, you know post launch impressions and please start throwing those Asian builds my way. I would love to start highlighting them here on the Division Weekly. That is going to do it for this one. Stay safe out there in NYC agents, and I will see you in the next one.